Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And uh, this is episode 269 of the Steel City Blitz podcast. And we, uh, of course, are proud to be part of the Pigskin Podcast Network and affiliated with DraftKings Sportsbook. And we'll be sure and tell you a little bit more about that later. And uh, we expect that Ian will be jumping on quite soon. And speak of the devil, there he is. <laughs> Ian, we have just started recording, so welcome aboard. Literally, like in the last 20 seconds, so perfect timing. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Good evening, indeed. Sir. Uh, uh, let, well, since I see Ben enjoying a beverage, uh, Ben, what are you drinking oh, tonight? That is good. Uh, 60 second IPA. 60 second IPA. Does that like celebrate uh, anything in particular or uh... 60 second 60 minute IPA? 60 minute. Okay. Is that the dogfish head? Dogfish, dogfish head. head. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yep. There it is. And uh, yeah. It's a yeah. very pop, very popular choice of uh, Harry Reasoner used to drink that uh, in 60 minutes, I think. Was quite a, okay. Not really. That's for, that's for the old folks. Uh, Ryan, what are you uh, drinking tonight? Uh, Vodka pineapple juice. Vodka pineapple juice. There's a new one. Pineapple. Okay, a little festive. Uh, uh, Ryan likes pineapple on his theme. pizza too. Oh, oh shit! Don't get going on that. Uh, Ian, what are you drinking tonight? <laughs> um, so Asian. I I polished off a couple margaritas after dinner because yeah. it is Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de yeah. Mayo. But I I switched to whiskey for the podcast. Oh, delicious! I uh, tequila to whiskey. I no. have uh, nice. Where, where did my thing go? Oh, Not yeah. afraid to mix it up. I like. Yeah, it. I, I've got I gotta little... kill this bottle off. <laughs> Yes, the broken you top. Should. The broken needs top. to go. I mean, it's just a little tiny bit left. We got to Yeah, that. I uh, I got a little whiskey and, and a little bit of uh, Southern Tier. Oh yeah, Good Lake choice. Shore fog as well. So uh, we are all enjoying a beverage, and we hope that uh, if you're listening and or watching, that you are able to as well. Uh, the last time we came to you, the Steelers um, had drafted Kenny Pickett, 20th overall in the first oh, round yes. of the 2022 draft. Uh, and that means we really haven't had an opportunity to kind of give you our thoughts on the rest of the draft. So we're going to do that tonight. Talk a little bit about uh, the latest on the general manager uh, thing there and uh, a few other a few other items, <laughs> observations and things, if you will. And uh, we'll just uh, we'll just get rolling from right there. So, um Guys, we, we talked a little bit about Pickett, and I'm sure we'll probably revisit it, revisit that a little bit um, as we go through the show tonight. But um, George Pickens, um, Ryan, where where you uh, fall on uh, Mr. Pickens in terms of your overall level of excitement, anticipation, concern, all those things about him? Patient. Um, you're going to hear a lot of this from me tonight. Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I, this, I, I'm going to use a lot of cliches tonight. Uh, but no, Pickens has, Pickens has a huge upside. Um, he is coming off of an injury. Um, you know, I, I know there are some off the field questions, but, mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, everybody has a phone now. Everybody has a camera, um, who, you know, I, you could probably, you know, and everybody got the internet, so you could probably find dirt on anybody. So, you know, I, I don't necessarily worry too much about that stuff. You know, the Steelers do an uh, you know incredible job of, of vetting. They have multiple interviews with these kids. Um, I am excited about him, though. He's he's got that he's got that speed. Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to making catches when it counts. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's another cliche, but I'm probably going to say this about all the draft picks, but, you know, we're not going to know right away. It's going to take some time, right. um, but I am excited about Pickens. Um, I think he probably would have went in the first round had he not had a little bit of noise surrounding him. Yeah. Um, but if there's any team in this league that knows how to draft wide receivers uh, and develop them, and uh, it's the Steelers. I, I don't know that there's anything, and I'll, I'll just kind of preface, uh, and Ryan, what you were saying too about this idea of we'll probably say a lot of we'll see, and you're right. 
I don't think any of us are big believers in grading the draft uh, hours afterwards. Uh, these guys need to get on the field. They need to be coached. They need to play before we're going to do any of that. What do you uh, mean, Mark? Any measure of a good team is based on how my personal draft board was <laughs> and how well they followed it. Or and, and how and how 312 of your, your mock drafts went throughout the last month. Is, is that part of it, too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Ben, what what are what are your thoughts on Pickens? Uh, he's a first round talent who has some red flags and okay. fell. And I mean, it, look, short short answer here. If he continues the same behavior, bad pick. If he grows the fuck up, good pick. I, the end. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's, no, a, I, he's I, a competitor. He's yeah. he's a tough guy. He needs to put on a little bit of weight. He's a little skinny. But that, you know, a lot of kids are like that when they come in. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. And he's only um, 21. I mean, he's yeah. really He's only young. 21. He just, he's, he's got to mature. If he grows up and doesn't pull that crap, he'll be fine. I think it's kind of a dicey pick, to be honest with you, because I don't really see a lot of leadership in the, in the wide receiver core. And I, I think that, that you really don't want Claypool and Pickens to be roommates. Let's not do that. Um, beyond that, you know, I'm just waiting yeah. for that first TikTok video. <laughs> well, <Right? laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he's already basically gone viral with that picture of him standing there in front of the TV wearing who the hell knows what while watching himself get drafted. I mean, it's funnier than hell, but I, I you know, it is what it is. Um, what well, here's the thing about it. Yeah, yeah, here's the thing about that that video of him though, right? He didn't take that video. It's not like it's not like, you know, right. Antonio Brown staging himself getting a phone call and having a guy like <laughs> having a professional videographer there and then running through the backyard being like, "I'm free, I'm free," you know? Like that was completely staged and set up. This was like Pickens watching himself get drafted at his own draft party, and you watch any video of any guy's draft party whether it's George Pickens, whether it's Kenny Pickett, whether it's whoever else, everybody there's got phones out recording yeah. the guy, right? Yeah. So you have to know you're under the spotlight, but at the same time, I agree, it was just silly and funny, and it's like, okay, you're going to stand there with, I mean, it, basically a ski mask on, you know, watching yourself get drafted, <laughs> like, what the hell, you know? Uh, it's it's kind of funny. I, you know, and I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, we either when we talked about wide receivers or when we just kind of t gave our overall draft thoughts that they put a lot of time into George Pickens. Like Frisman they Jackson did. went to his pro day and worked him out. Um, you know, I think they had dinner with him. I think he was on the dinner list. Um, and then, uh, you know, they they obviously you know vetted him fully to see if he was back from the injury. Yep. I'm sure they you know they've talked to him multiple times about some of the immature things. And you know, okay. The, the squirting the water bottle on the Tennessee dude was just stupid. Like, right. That doesn't, that doesn't really register for me. The getting in a fist fight with a Georgia Tech but player, maybe a little bit more, but that also the water shows. bottle on the Tennessee player. Didn't that remind you of something that Chase Claypool would do? <laughs> no. Claypool. I, I, can see, I can see Antonio Brown doing it. No, because the clock wasn't yeah. running at the time. So Claypool wouldn't do it. That's a really good point. Ian. That's a really, really good point. That's terrific. Um, no, but like honestly, I thought uh, Pickens was a guy had first round talent and like a sixth round attitude, right? If you can fix that sixth round attitude, or at least rein it in and get it under control, you can get a guy at fifty two that I kind of thought was capable of going in the late first, early second round. Like he was basically a top 40 player that was available yeah. at 52. Like you can't he's, pass he's up on that. A, a first yeah. rounder. I agree with you. I, yeah. I, I, I could have passed on him. I, I wanted sky more. I'll be honest. Yeah. I wanted sky more too, but they also got a guy in Calvin Austin since they double dipped at wide receiver right. that can do a lot of similar things to sky more and is a bit faster. So, you know, they, they, they did hit a lot of the positions of need and, uh, you know, I don't want to give Ben too big of a head here, but he <laughs> was talking about us double dipping at wide receiver for months. Yes. You know, and then everyone on Twitter is like, I'm shocked the Steelers double dipped at wide receiver. I'm like, we've been talking like Ben yeah, specifically, yeah. but our show has been talking about this for, for months that they might double dip at wide receiver. Um, but I, 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 and I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Finish. Oh, I was going to say on, on that, on that note of double dipping, 
we really shouldn't be surprised. I went back and looked. Our drafts since 2010, nine out of the last 13 drafts, we've double dipped at at least one position. So it's not uncommon for the Steelers to double dip. No, it, it's not. I, it's, I think, especially because they needed it. I think we might. I, I know we're getting away from the draft here a little bit, but okay. we should we should talk about motivation here real quickly and just segue into the fact that Deontay Johnson is going to the last year of his deal. The wide receiver market is completely out of fucking control. Yeah. It's um, getting him for the $15 million the Steelers fans were astounded by would be a bargain right now. The Steelers, if that was floated out there to them in February, should have said, sure, sign it now. Yeah. They didn't. Now he's going to want 18, 20. I mean, that's just the market. So I kind of wonder if they believe, not that they don't want to resign Deontay Johnson, but if they don't think they're going to be able to. Yeah. And so I they know. went ahead and double dipped and just thought, you know what, we'll get another one next year too, and we'll be in good shape. It'll be fine. I, I, I think it makes sense. Um, when you look at the contracts that guys were getting before the draft, then you look at what happened during the draft – um, with A.J. Brown getting that deal that, that he got uh, with Philadelphia. I, I mean, Johnson's going to easily demand way more than $15 million. It was that Jaguars deal. Oh, that yeah, that was the tipping point. That was the, the, the Jaguars the deal is, is, was, the, was the Joe Flacco deal the Ravens did. Yeah. Except this time it was for, it was for a wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, no, and people, people called it immediately. Mm -hmm. That guy's not worth that much money. Are you guys high? No, it was well, now everybody else is like, I'm 10 times better than that guy. I want more money than he's getting. Right. It's Jacksonville, right. so they probably were. Well, <laughs> to be fair, and I don't agree with the price, but right. Joe Flacco in those 2012 playoffs was really, really good. Okay, Ryan, we haven't discussed this with you, so I'm going to run it through with you real quick. Short ah. version. They switched offensive coordinators. Okay. With five games left in the season. They did. Okay, actually four games left in the season. They started changing the offense. Okay. And uh, opposing defensive coordinators didn't have enough tape <laughs> on that offense to be able to predict what they were going to do based upon the formations they were in and, and what they did when they broke immediately off of the snap. So it gave the Ravens an advantage, and it made Joe Flacco look like he was a superstar. He's not. He never was. I, I, I literally just said that that, that postseason – I didn't say anything else. I get else. it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I just – I get this argument with people all the fucking time. They're like, yeah, he was he was elite then. No, he wasn't. It was a mirage. I didn't say – I didn't even mirage. say he was elite. I said he was really good that postseason. <laughs> well, it was a I'm, being a, no, I'm being a dick, right? I'm being a dick. But, no, I it, get what you're saying. And, I yes, Andy I fucking it. Dalton could have done that. I don't know about that. Uh, 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 anyway. You know what? Andy Dalton was an all-pro one year because his offensive line was outstanding. Okay? That's true. Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton was a good quarterback. Eh, I, I liked him. I Andy liked Dalton him was a out. serviceable quarterback. Yeah. If you put him behind a good offensive line who gave him time, yeah, he did He did pretty okay. Yeah. If, if he was rushed or if he had to create, if he had to be the guy to take the team on his back and, and win games, no, he was not that guy, never. I want to move Neither was Flacco. to uh, round three. <laughs> the Steelers take defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal, uh, or yeah. Leal, excuse Leal. me, I believe is the correct. I was talking about him as a day, as a second round it, guy, it, and we got him in the third. I was thrilled with that pick. I, I, pick. In the third round, I love that pick. Yeah, and, and, and go ahead a little bit, Ian, and explain why you, you like that one so much. Yeah. Pineapple, um, juice, pineapple juice and a margarita is good, actually. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I was coming. Ryan said he was drinking pineapple juice and vodka. So I was like, pineapple juice makes a really good margarita, yeah. also. You mix um, it with your sweet and sour. It's really tasty. Yeah, yeah. At any rate, uh, DeMarvin De Leal, uh, AM moved him around the defensive line a lot. They played him at edge quite a bit, but he's yeah. a little big for an edge. He's like 285. Um, so I think he makes a really good. 3-4 defensive end. He's got the size to kind of anchor inside. He's got great hands. His handwork is fantastic. Um, his his base and strength could use a little work, but when you have the hands, you can build the base and strength. And he's because AM moved him around in a 4-3 front, like 
he could be a decent 4-3 end that could kind of anchor against the run and give you a little push against the pass. But as a 3-4 end where he's playing either a 3-tech or a 5-tech, he mm-hmm. has the handwork on the inside to be able to, you know, work through the linemen. And he's got the foot quickness to, you know, chase those outside zone plays down the line. So I, I really like the pick for him kind of transitioning to the inside, not being an edge rusher, but transitioning to the inside as yeah. a, you know, yeah. being able to play on third downs, being able to play even honestly, considering he played some defensive end in a four, three, mm-hmm. you could put him at edge in your nickel package. If you wanted like a heavier set against a run, like let's say Stefan to it comes back. You could go Leal to it. Hayward and TJ Watt is your front in a nickel defense. You can as long as he's he's, he's this light. Yes, if, if he gains weight, that's mm-hmm. probably going to be it's going to be problematic, and he's yeah. going to gain weight. I don't know yeah. about this year. I'm not saying that, but right. and yeah, well, I, I mean, agree with everything that Ian just said. I think this is a great pick. He's already got pass rush moves. He already uses his hands very very well. Um, he does need to, I don't know, get a little heavier in the seat, for lack of a better way of putting it. It's not that I I think he needs to get just heavier. He needs to thicken out his lower body is what it looks like to me. I, mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but, um, but yeah, I really nice pick in the third round. I got to give him props for that. Yeah. And, and he was, again, he was the only, you know, uh, visit for, uh, Carl Dunbar, the defensive mm-hmm. line coach. That, yep. that was the only trip he made, at least the only one we're aware of. Um, yeah. I, I don't think he went anywhere else. Um, you know, I, Ryan, how how much if Tua comes back, how, how much different is this defensive line this year from last year? I, uh, <laughs> I I'm I don't want to say night and day, but probably yeah, I'm going to say it. Um, it, but it, <sighs> close to it, I'll go with that. But I would but I would say this, and Kevin Colbert actually actually mentioned this. It's not. It's not. It, Okay, so if Tua comes back, where is he at mentally, and then where is he at physically? He hasn't played football, yeah, in a year plus. Fair. Very fair. Um, I'm not gonna say that he forgot how to play football. Um, I, I, I'm sure the muscle memory's there, and he can get back into shape. Um, you know, it was always, uh, you know, it was always a knee. You know, he always had the last year was always like a knee. It was a knee injury, but I think, yeah. we, I think we yeah. knew it was more than that. So, I mean, is, is he good there? But a healthy to it, um, with this group, I think it, I think it and obviously Tyson Alawalu, hopefully healthy and get as well. Mm-hmm. He's a little bit older, he's 35, I think, but 34, yeah. At the end of the day, like the weakness was the weakness was up front last year, and 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 I've and I've talked about this many times. They've had they had pretty much three good players on defense on defense with Cam, TJ, and Minka. Um, but that doesn't mean that their defense overall was good because their defense overall last year was not good. They were terrible mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. the run. They, I mean, it's, it's, it happens every year, but they did not do well against good quarterbacks. Um, so it, it all starts with pressure. And if you can get Stephon Tuitt back, and if he's eighty percent of what he used to do, I think you're in good shape. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Especially I, with Leal. Right. Like yeah. Leal. Leal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lil. Just, just, you know, over on our uh, our private chat here, Ian's got, you know, you're, you're potentially looking at Hayward Al-Alu and uh, Tuit Leal Adams, uh, that Montrevious Adams who came on and played so well last year, and, and of course, Isaiah Loudermilk. And he, Loudermilk's a guy I'm kind of excited about, to be honest with you. I saw some good things last year. Um is, is and he's going to be heavier this year. He, he's going to be too. heavier. He's going to be stronger. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited about him, too. Which so. means no more Chris Wormley. And finally, the Henry Mondo experiment can end. Yeah, right. Ma- Mondo. Please, baby uh, Jesus. I mean, can that guy yeah. just fucking go? Go play <laughs> for the Browns. He kind of sounds like a Browns player. You know what's, yeah. what's, yeah. what's funny? And this is a tangent, but... They've led the league in sacks, what, five straight years? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yep. And, like, those dudes that we're shitting on right now got sacks last year and were part right. of that. I Mondo mean, you, had you, a look, sack. you look at Chris Wormley, for example, because Ian just brought it up. Yep. This is a player who was very good 
pa- rushing the passer. He was good that way. Mm-hmm. If he didn't get sacks, he got pressures consistently. But he could not. Terrible against the run. He could oh, not protect yeah, his gap to save his fucking life. He was awful against the run. And we just got gashed. I, yeah. I got you. I just yeah. I'm busting your balls because the like these no, guys. I, like, I agree were, with these you. Guys were right. contributors, but I think they were only contributors by they were only contributors by necessity. Like right, like they were literally right. like yes. they were last yeah. resort. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody's yeah. nobody's going. Hey, you know what? Stephon Tuitt's down, but it's all right. We got Henry Mondu. Yeah, It'll we be can. fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Wait, 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 no wait, worries. wait. Chris Wormley had seven fucking sacks last year. Yeah, so I just looked this up. He yes. had seven. That's insane. and he had and he had he had pressures. He had like twenty three or twenty four pressures. In the I was like, yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna say, Ryan. Didn't he have three against Baltimore? Me. I had no three idea. Two and I, a half. I had, he had a lot. He had a I good had, game versus Baltimore. He did. I, he, all right, I, I had to look this up. Chris Wormley has ten and a half career sacks and had seven last year. Yeah. Yes, that's. But but it's the trade off. I mean, that these is the guys. Trade-off. Yeah, it is the trade off. Yeah. I mean, he, he does him, one do thing well. Getting gashed. Yeah. He no. penetrates well, but uh, right. if you want to run the ball, you can run straight at him, mm-hmm. and it's no problem. Mm-hmm. You'll get nine yards. So why don't we just run the ball? Which yeah. is what most offensive coordinators did last season. Yes. They were just like, yeah. fuck yes. it. Steelers hey, can't defend uh, the run, so we're just going to run it. Let me remind everybody real quick: uh, we are proudly presented by Deck Roof of South Florida. <laughs> Deck serves Brower in the Palm Beach counties, whether it's commercial, industrial, residential, multifamily, or condo. Contact Deck Roofing today by visiting deckroofing.com. Multifamily, um, Ian. I, I mentioned I multifamily. said multifamily. You were the one that disagreed with me. <laughs> it's, it, well, they do it all. They even do mom You and know, if first. Mark had been smart enough to give me a read... Give me something to read when we were doing the show. Would have been fine. He didn't. I, I like had to make it up off the cuff. I, I had to like go from memory. I think last week this is what he said. And that was fine. We're, we're, we're all good. As long as we get the name of the company. That's all I care. I like how this happened two years ago and we're mm-hmm. still talking about it. Yeah, we're still, still talking about it. it. I have no idea what yeah. the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> kicks a dead horse like we do. Uh uh. Fourth round, Calvin Austin the third. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the 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 joke about um, uh, if they they wanted to no. on his on his the wrestling thing. Oh, fuck, please make no. him number sixteen him so number you'd 16. have Austin three sixteen. If if that happens, okay. First of all, wrestling's fucking stupid. <laughs> I'll just put it out there. Hate me if you want to. Unfollow me on Twitter. I give a shit. Wrestling's fucking dumb. It's, <laughs> it's a performance. The outcome is predetermined. It's not a competition. Hey, hey if it got the Steelers free visits from Stone Cold Steve Austin, I'd be no. Okay. Uh, Fuck that uh, shit. Uh, anyway, anyway, yeah, he was number the, four in college, and I hope he's number four well, for, for the Steelers. How I dare you know. give away Byron Left, which is number like that, <laughs> right? That, how that's you? true. Should be, that's should true. Be retired. Uh, right? But let's talk a little bit more about the player, Kelvin Austin the third. Uh, Ryan, what nice uh, skill set? Yeah, what do you see about this kid, man? Was, was, was this a reach? Was this a guy that's gonna uh, be, I mean, uh, you, you know, know, what do you think? Better than Dre Archer? What you know, pretty fast dude. You gotta hope. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he's he's very, very fast, he's a little bit smaller, but you know, you you could they obviously went for speed on offense. I, I totally yeah. get it. Um, Pickens in the second round. Obviously, he can ex- stretch the field, but you know Austin's a guy that it can catch a you know a negative two yard pass and take it to the house. And and I <laughs> I joked with you, I was like, oh yes, more wide receiver screens. But like, here's a guy that can finally like now, take here's it. A guy. Here's a guy. Here's a guy. No, here's, here's a guy. guy that's not afraid of running down the field fast. Um, <laughs> so, no, but like I I. You know, my like my only my only thing would be that right away Steelers Twitter was like, Oh, this is our Tyreek Hill. And the ultimate disrespect to Tyreek Hill, <laughs> like when you just automatically say that. Yeah. So let's let's see what happens. Um my only my only thing is that is competition. Um I just I you know like conference was it conference USA? Conference USA. Uh, you know, I the no disrespect to conference USA. 
You know, Cincinnati well, rep- plenty of disrespect to them, but yeah, Cincinnati represented themselves well last year. But you know, we talked about I think before we got on the show how certain conferences defenses are kind of skeptical, and I just I just don't know. So again, this is the you know this is the part where I say we'll see. Um, but I, he's mm-hmm. fast as hell, and they need they needed speed. Um, and, and I think that that's a good, and, and, and they took him. the Ravens were going to, I'm sure you saw that the rats the were going to take him. Yeah. The Ravens were going to take him, And one of the Raven scouts saw that the Steelers were going to take him, And he basically was like, are you oh. kidding me? Yeah. Loved it. You know, yeah. Uh, Cause so any, anytime you can get a, a nudge, uh, a, absolutely. You know, a nudge on the Ravens is good. No doubt they, about it. They really needed a slot receiver badly. Yeah. Yeah, and they got a kid who's got great change of direction, speed, and that's what you need there. And and he's, you know, he's, Ian, excuse me, Ian Ryan's dead on. He's not a very big kid. He's tiny, but as Ian has pointed out, the issue with Dre Archer was that he had great straight line speed, but he could not maintain that speed while changing direction. Yep. Austin seems to be able to do so. Yeah, and yeah he, he does. I, I'm not going to compare him to Tyreek Hill. I think that's ridiculous. Isn't Hill probably got about 30 pounds on this kid? He's he's uh, bigger, 15. but but he's also a lot older at this point. And this kid, oh, yeah, you know, he'll yeah. grow. His body will change. He's yeah. young. You know, he'll probably he'll probably put on 15, 20 pounds mm-hmm. just like that. But regardless, at this point, yeah, he's he's thin. Um, maybe he'll be a return man. Maybe not. I don't know, but, uh, nice pick for a slot receiver. Pretty excited. Runs good routes. Let's hope he catches the ball Mm -hmm. and let's leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, what do you think here about, uh, Mr. Uh, Kelvin Austin? Yeah. Um, so just to point out that Memphis was in the American athletic conference, not conference USA. Uh, but here's a guy who doesn't know his conferences. (laughs) 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 <laughs> Sorry, I, I apologize. That was awesome. <laughs> Amazing. No, do that again. It was <laughs> awesome. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Look, I, look, what are you every, sorry for? That was every, fantastic. I said every, I said the other day the pit was still in the Big East, and I was just like, I'm yeah, old. yeah. Everything got fucked up when the Big East like dissolved, so <laughs> it's fine. No, Memphis used to be in Conference USA, as did Cincinnati, but That's now right. they're in the American. So hey, you it's know fine. who the old, but, the old head coach at Memphis was. Uh, Randy Finkner. I was going to say Penny Hardaway is their basketball coach, but I don't know. That's, know. that's right. Um, yeah, Randy was, yeah. 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 Okay, so, so yeah, I Ben kind of stole my thunder with the, the Dre Archer thing, that, that Archer had straight line speed, but he didn't have a lot of wiggle. He couldn't maintain speed through cuts. And, you know, Archer also came down on first contact yes. a lot. From what I've seen of Calvin Austin, he seems to have a bit more – lower body strength Base. and balance that he can kind of maintain himself yes. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will say I have tweeted multiple times that Tyreek Hill is the player that the Steelers thought Drew Archer could be. Um, so there is some comparison there. Um, I thought, I thought the Anthony Thomas was the player they thought Drew Archer could be in terms of being a good return man and a guy who'd give you a little bit on offense. Yeah, I was I was thinking more of the sort of yeah. gadget tool because because remember Tyreek Hill wasn't always your the kind of number one receiver. He kind of started as a gadget tool. They'd run him out yeah. of a running yeah. back set. They did a lot of things moving him around the formation, that kind of stuff. Um, that said, Tyreek Hill had a much better three cone time than Calvin Austin did. Their shuttles were about the same, but his three cone much time, better. Uh, like. Uh, over a tenth of a second. Hill hey, uh, what? Hill ran a six point five three three cone, and Ooh. Austin ran a six point six five, which is still really damn really good. really good. But six five three, holy yeah. shit! Yeah. yeah. He's, he's um, good luck tackling that guy. Yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. Okay, yeah. no wonder he's so difficult to bring down. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. so, but but just it's to compare, up. like when, when we talk about speed through breaks, right? Yeah. That that Tyree or sorry. Dre Archer ran a 4.2640. Calvin Austin ran a 4.3240. So six one hundred slower. But their three cone time, Austin ran a 6.65. Dre Archer ran a 6.86, which was almost two, was over two tenths slower. That's a big difference in that. So, so that, 
that that's the speed through breaks thing, right? Mm-hmm. That it it makes a big difference. Um, so yeah, and and three cones aren't you know the absolute determining yeah. factor, but it's a it's a good measure. So is the shuttle, although their shuttles were about the same. Um, Austin did have a much larger broad jump than Dre Archer, so like we were talking about with his more strength more in his body. base, yeah. Um, so no, in the fourth round, I really like the pick. Um, you know, obviously they signed Gunnar Olszewski to be their return guy this year, but mm-hmm. we'll see what happens in the future. And you never know; they've had in the past different guys doing punt returns and kick returns. So um, you know, maybe one guy gets a chance, maybe they they both get chances. But they they only had going into the draft two starting capable receivers in right. Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. So they kind of need this double dip here. They needed a slot Anthony receiver. Miller. What about Cody White? I mean, shit. <laughs> they, they, they Miles Boykin. Sims. Oh, they did sign Miles Boykin. That's true. I, I like Miles Boykin well, a lot. But I, yeah, I'm but curious. I wouldn't call him a starting caliber. No, I, I, I'm, I'm though, curious. That's all I'm saying about him. I am too. Yeah, but but now you have at least five or six guys, you know that that you can carry on to your Bacon. opening day roster. Um, you know, with I, I, you have Johnson, Claypool, Pickens, Boykin. So you have backups at both outside positions, and then Olszewski and Austin as slot they, guys. So yeah, they, they do they still have to find a veteran guy in that room though? Oh, I mean, it would it, just... it would be nice, but also I mean, it, it depends on how much you trust Frisman Jackson as your new right. receivers coach to kind of control the room and get bring the guys along and all that stuff if if you feel like he's got a good strong hand on it you can get away with some young and immature guys you know there were there was a long time with like daryl drake that drake had such a good calming hand in the receiving room that you could just draft guys then antonio brown was kept under control yeah 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 and and correlation there the the one other thing i'll say is for a long time on this show we've always said that the biggest market inefficiency in the league is having a quarterback on his rookie contract Mm -hmm. because paying a guy a rookie contract as a quarterback versus paying a guy 35, $40 million. Now, I mean, what we started talking about was 25 with Flacco, but now it's gone to 35 or 40 is, is huge. And the receiver market is getting there that now, you know, paying a wide receiver $25 million a year, versus having guys on their rookie deals you saw a lot of teams during the draft making that decision tennessee literally traded away aj brown and he got a 25 million Mm dollar a year contract for a guy who was athletically basically the same as aj brown but on his rookie contract right trey burks so speaking of contracts since you brought it up and it bears in the conversation miles boykin is due to make 2.54 million dollars this year right so if he's a guy that is going to get one reception based upon what he does in training camp and in the preseason, I don't see him making the team. And that's what he got last year in Ratland. One reception. It was on against us, target. though. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Of course it was. It was against the Steelers. I remember it. Yeah. Um, but no, but I, th- I think – I think he's a guy too that if you bring him in, if you like what he can do, if you like his skill set, you might be able to get him through waivers onto the practice squad. Boykin? Yeah. Possible. It's possible. Yeah. You know, if is he too old? No, they've got no man, the practice squad rules now or I mean, basically true, anybody, yeah. you could be in the league forever and they'd be like, yeah, well, That's, okay. he's Shit. one of our three I'm, guys. I'm that... so old. It used to be like, you couldn't be a two. You couldn't have right. two years of experience. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, it'd be like, they would. you would fly under the radar because you wouldn't get a, you wouldn't get a year of experience. You would get an accrued year. Right, You wouldn't accrued. get an experience year. Do, so guys do like, we still have the COVID rules this year for the practice squad? Are they yeah, still I think there's those a permit, giant, yeah. Those giant fucking practice yes, squads. Yes, yeah. existed for this the, past year. The one week of eligibility, and then you go back to the practice squad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't didn't they kind of formalize that and make it permanent with a new CBA? Didn't they kind of sneak Ooh. that in there? That the practice squads were kind of expanded. And, they were at least... expanded, but not like this. This is, I mean, it. 
Last couple of years have been ridiculously huge. I, I don't know about the one week call up thing, but I think they definitely expanded like eligibility for veteran players to be on practice squads. That for sure okay. happened. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the, the one week eligibility and the three weeks of IR and all it, the whole thing is just like it, it's baseball esque. Yeah. Let's you know, uh, where, where yeah, go ahead, ben. certain coaches, <clears throat> Bill Belichick, are going to abuse the system and eventually it's going to be like, yeah. Um, you're not allowed to do that anymore because you're just stashing guys on, on injured reserve and they're not mm-hmm. hurt because mm-hmm. you don't want to cut them and you need a roster spot. Yep. Some are better than others at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the sixth round, the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted Mr. Connor Hayward of Michigan State. Ryan I'm loves shocked. Pick. I want to hear uh, what Ryan has to say. Yeah, Scarps, go ahead. Your thoughts on the uh, drafting of one Mr. Connor Hayward. Go ahead, Ryan. Tell us what you think. They should have probably taken him in the first round. I mean, <laughs> and then they could have gotten Pickett at 52. So, I mean. Probably, yeah, but. No, I, I, uh, I, I've said, I said on the show earlier on. <laughs> oh, man. Here, here's the way I look at it. It's a cool story. Yep. I totally get it. What's cool about it? Oh, wow. You're being a dick tonight. Um, <laughs> it's cool because he's Cam Hayward's younger brother. That's it? Cam, That's the only thing that's cool about it? Uh, Cam, is, Cam is a staple uh, in this community. He's an all-pro. Um, his dad played here at Pitt. Um, he was with Cam the night he got drafted. Um, his last so name is Hayward. Really cool. Um, his older brother is Cam. And his brother's um, Cam. And his no, brother, and, and here's the thing: Cam is really good at football. So no, and I, I, I think that I think that Connor Hayward can play football. And obviously, you know, but I just I think that they probably could have not drafted him and still gotten him. Um, I don't know if any team, other team, would have drafted him. I don't know. And this is not disrespect. I'm glad that he's here. The good thing is he's here. He's with his brother, Coach Tallman. He's got a good coaching staff. But I, I just – I feel like the Steelers do these things just because sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, and, and and this is no disrespect to, to, to Connor Hayward, but, like, they are, they're already paying a fullback millions of dollars yep. to do the – literally whatever on offense and be on special teams. So I don't see them keeping both. And we just talked about the cheap, sort of like the cheaper option, but the cheaper option is Connor Hayward. So mm-hmm. I don't necessarily hate the pick or dislike the pick. I just think that they probably could have gotten him either in the last pick or not even spent a draft pick on him. Um, we we all know that they, we all know a certain wide receiver they found in the sixth round. It turned out to be really really good. Yeah. Um. So you know, again, I it, you know I don't want to I don't want to sound you know rude or whatever i just it's just kind of like just the overwhelming like just sort of like oh my goodness we drafted connor hayward it's like uh, i get that he's cam's brother but like Mm -hmm. what like what else like come on like i mean and i'm not saying it ain't any good it's just like it's like that's what it is just like oh kenny pickett went to pit oh great (laughs) like like (laughs) what the fuck sorry tell us how you feel ryan (laughs) yes ryan so so ryan in comparison to the sixth round pick of long snapper (laughs) colin holba how would you rate the connor hayward pick (laughs) we'll see (laughs) we'll see he he said i was being a dick (laughs) (laughs) colin holba is a nice dude (laughs) <laughs> Colin Hobo was a nice dude. He probably should have stuck with baseball. Wait, is he is he in the league still? Yeah, yeah he plays for Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Jacksonville? Oh, yeah, no, does? they yeah. they claimed him off waivers, and he's been a long snapper ever since. That's what I thought. Oh, uh, was, I think it was Greg Warren was still there. To, no, uh, Greg Warren was Greg Warren was done. He that was he yeah. tore his ACL or something, right? Yeah, he tore yeah. his ACL. No one, no one knew that he needed surgery. And then we were right. like, why the fuck did they draft the long snapper? And then it came out that like Warren had torn his ACL and was pretty much done. It was but, like, oh, but, okay, but who, I get it. But wait a minute. Who did who did we who was the long snapper replaced? And why am I drawing Can- Canada? We kept yeah, Canada can- instead Canada, of Canada. Uh, Canada beat him out in camp. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Cam. So, Canada Ian, how how did the Steelers? Oh, that's you know, right. That's the year I left. I forgot. Sorry. Matt There's Canada that. actually. Makes sense. If you look at his college offenses, he actually utilizes the fullback somewhat decently. I, I mean, how does he how does he yeah. use Hayward then? Uh, so I I think Ryan's onto something. The blocker. Here. That yeah, that that Derek Watt. Ryan's whole point was that um, the Steelers like brothers, and especially if your brother's really good at football. The Steelers might draft you. Yes. Or or just keep you if around. If your name is Watt or Hayward, you might have or a Edmonds. job. Or Edmonds because Trey Edmonds is like the cat of nine lives okay. and somehow is still yeah. on Trey the, Edmonds uh, actually Davis. does make, make a contribution time and again. I got to give him props. His brother's not as good as the other two guys we mentioned before. But <laughs> do, you, do you remember that for a long time – Trey Edmonds had as many interceptions as Terrell yes. Edmonds did yep. because he yes. intercepted that punt that yes. the Rams tried to do. Yeah, that's okay. right. At any rate, I digress. Uh, Ryan's on to something here that Derek Watt has a cap hit of almost $5 million. Yeah. Does the, he fucking really? It's 4.7, yes. Jesus. The Steelers mm-hmm. could save 2.75 against the cap if they cut Derek Watt. The other or thing they is just, uh, they don't really they they don't really have a third tight end right now. I mean, you have Fryermuth, you have Gentry. I guess Kevin Raiders your third tight, and, and I like Kevin Raider. Don't get me wrong; oh, he's the best guy, blocker. Field guy. I don't. Gentry's come along. He Rufio has. Guy. He has. Yeah. Okay. Raider. If they cut Derek Watt, they only save two point seven five million. Yeah. Basically, their shitty structure here, and almost two million dollars of his cap hit is dead in money. prorated bonus it's dead so i don't really see a huge upside here yeah so well, well what i'm saying is though with connor hayward potentially if you think he can play both fullback and tight end you right. could fill essentially two How roster positions play with tight end? Um, alfredo roberts said they're going to use him at tight that, end. that's what they're I, saying yes yeah uh, so yeah h back uh, he's baby. his brother uh, yeah, uh, Maybe H well, back. You're not using that guy at tight end. He's way too small. I, yeah, I I think when they say tight end, they're talking H back. That's my feeling. Pro- He's too small. Probably yes, or in like a three tight end goal line set because you want to get Cam's brother a touchdown. What? Um, <laughs> no, seven reports is eligible. Oh, <laughs> yes. here we go. Throws a touchdown to his brother. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see I can it see already. It. Matt yeah. Canada is drawing this shit up right now. Uh huh. Yeah. He's got the, like the the child's like alphabet yeah. letters on the refrigerator right now. Sure. But no, it's. I mean, for <laughs> I, I'm, for, I'm a prick. I honestly, for for a sixth round pick, like if you get a guy who's a good special teamer, that's yeah. a solid sixth round pick. Like to me, yeah. sixth and seventh round is like. Borderline practice squad guys, if they can give you anything on even special teams, that's solid. So even if all he is is a solid special teamer, which is all Derek Watt is right now, and we're paying him almost $5 million against the cap this year, mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's fine. I I don't have a huge issue with it. I'm not I'm not losing my mind over a six-round no, pick. No, no, Um let me uh, go to unless unless Ben unless you had any other comments on Hayward, but I, I was going to go to Mark Robinson, the uh, linebacker. My comment is that it's a charity pick, and I agree. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I, moving on. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, uh, Ben. Go ahead, and, and I really have not seen a lot of Robinson. I'm, I'm not going to neither have I. Pretend that so I have. I'm not um, going to parse this out. I yeah, there, think it's a decent developmental pick. Yes. Maybe. Yes. And he might make the team or not. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's exactly what it's about. <laughs> um, give him the opportunity. See what happens. Um, and then uh, in round seven, of course, they, they took uh, another quarterback. They start yeah, wait, the draft with the QB. And, on, and... on Robinson, though. Yeah, sure. You know, he he's oh, a guy. Go. Here's a guy. Ryan, do it. Here's a guy. It's not paying attention. He's looking at Google right now. <laughs> no, but uh, Ro- Robinson was Robinson was, came to Ole Miss as a running back and transitioned to linebacker, and that 
that transition might sound weird going offense to defense, but it's basically reading the same thing, right? As a running back, you read where the holes are and you hit the hole. As a linebacker, right. you re- as an inside linebacker, mm-hmm. you read where the hole is and hit the running back coming through the hole. So it, it, it's not as difficult a transition as you would think. Um, he's okay athletically, not superb, not terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the kind of question I have on Mark Robinson is just like, where does he fit on the depth chart? Just because mm-hmm. right now an inside linebacker, and Back I know squad, I know they did not pick up Devin Bush's fifth year option. So right, uh, right. But you've got at least for this year, Devin Bush, Miles Jack, Robert Spillane, who signed a tenure a tender. So Bush and yep. Spillane just one year left, but still beyond that. Then you've got Marcus Allen, Ulysses Gilbert, uh Buddy Johnson, and then Robinson. So I mean that's what seven guys I just named an inside yeah. linebacker. It's not they're, great depth either. They're not gonna keep seven inside linebackers. So no. someone probably not gonna keep six. It, Probably not going to, I mean, five, yeah, usually maybe four or five, yeah. probably four five. five. Yeah. And it's so, yeah, it's, Robinson goes to the practice squad. He's a developmental guy. Yeah. They, they usually don't maybe. keep 10 total linebackers. It's usually nine total linebackers. So whether that's five outside, four inside Sometimes or, or they keep whatever 10, if they have a really good happened. group, right. Yeah. It's happened. It's yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, five, I'd say five at most on the inside. So, yeah. I you know that it's. I'm glad they drafted an inside linebacker because I felt like we kind of needed a succession plan. But why Devin didn't Bush. they draft an edge? Uh, that's a good question. I don't. Well, know. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask that question yeah. after we talked briefly here about a um, or yeah. Oladakun, or however he says his name. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I. I mean, I. I. I'm fine with it. They felt like they needed to draft him because they figured he was probably going to go elsewhere uh, in in undrafted free agency. So um, that that's why they went in that direction. I mean, he's yeah. he's got some skills, but he's clearly a camp arm. Um, when you look at yeah. the other three guys, I think there. they they drafted another quarterback because they basically feel that um, now that they've signed a quarterback and drafted another one in the first round. Yep. This guy they had. S- slotted to be their starter mm-hmm. uh, is going to either be a a roster cut in August or he's going to get traded. Yeah, and I'm I'm speaking about one Mason Rudolph. Right, he's only going to make three million dollars in compensation this year, but three million dollars for your third team quarterback who's not named Charlie Batch, I don't see it. The and I think Mark kind of hit the nail on the head here that the Steelers a don't pay a lot to their undrafted free agents. No. B for a UDFA quarterback to come in here, knowing that you just drafted Kenny Pickett and signed Mitch Trubisky. Like at best, you might be the third quarterback. It's not right. a great situation. Right. So they they weren't going to be able to. They didn't have a real appealing situation for an undrafted right. quarterback to sign. Right. So they kind of figured we'll just use this last seventh round pick on a quarterback and then we'll have him. And it was a guy they, they brought in for a pre-draft visit. So I guess they kind of liked him mm-hmm. and he's got some, he doesn't have a big arm, but he's relatively accurate and he's got some elusiveness. He's got yeah. some foot speed. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, all right, we know we need four for camp. He's going to be our fourth guy. And now like, he wouldn't have signed here, like Mark said. He wouldn't have signed here as an undrafted guy, so. but now he's stuck with us because we drafted him. So, right. um, you know, and and there were a couple other quarterbacks after him that did get drafted. So, you know, it, you probably even think he might not have even been there as an undrafted guy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want to make sure Ben's going to be dropping off here in about ten minutes. I, I want to make sure I ask this question: um, Is Kenny Pickett the starting quarterback right now, Ben? No. Okay. You Mitchell to Trubisky you? is, and and okay. and Trubisky now knows, as I alluded to last week, he now knows how Mike Lennon felt when the Bears signed him to be their starter, mm-hmm. and then moved up in the first round to select Mitchell Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky. All the pressure is on Trubisky right now. The first time he throws a pick, the local fans who are also Pitt fans are going to be screaming, "Put in Pickett! Put in Pickett!" Yep. The fans, okay. The fans in Pittsburgh 
booed Terry Bradshaw mm-hmm. and Chuck Knoll. Mm-hmm. Okay, late in their careers, they they are ruthless. I yeah. don't know how else to put it. And I was going to say fickle, but ruthless is a good word. Ruthless, fickle, ruthless, and they are one hundred percent going to boo Mitchell Trubisky if he has a bad game and fuck with his psyche. Sorry, I, I'm agreeing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it's shaking. not a great situation. And if I'm Mitch Trubisky right now, I'm going, this is not what I thought I was coming into. And, you know, if I'm the Steelers, I'm like, well, you know, uh, we didn't think this guy was going to be available at 20 and we like him. So we're taking mm-hmm. him. Um, it is what it is. So, no, Pickett is not the starter okay. today. But will he be sometime during the 2022 season? Maybe, depending okay. on how well Trubisky plays. But since Trubisky can't throw to his left. <laughs> he struggles. Uh, Might be a problem. Uh, the uh, uh, Let me, let me toss that team of the question days. to uh, Ian. Ian, do you, do you think Pickett's the starting quarterback right now, or is it still uh, Trubisky? <laughs> no, it's it's Trubisky. Um, and, and I think <laughs> yes, <you> know, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Ben's screwing me up here. Um, no, I think I, I think it's it's Trubisky because um, and, and I understand Trubisky being upset that they drafted a quarterback. If he is, I'd assume that right. he would be. Yeah. Because um, he's, he's a competitor, right? He wants to be the guy. Of course. But but that being said, like if he had gone to the Giants, the Giants were going to give Daniel Jones another chance, right? Yep. And so if he'd gone to the Giants, then Jones would have been the starter week one and Trubisky would have basically been the backup until Jones screwed up enough for them to put in Trubisky Mm -hmm. coming to the Steelers. He gets to start week one, most likely, and then put some tape out there for other teams that I think he only signed a two year deal with us. So if the Steelers cut him after the first year, then, you know, then, then he's got some game tape out there for other teams to be like, Hey, I can come play for you. Plus, let's not forget, he backed up Josh Allen all of last year. So yeah. to be in a position where he can at least compete for a starting quarterback job is much better than the situation he was in last year. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. What do you think, Ryan? You think uh, same thing, Mitch, right now? and uh, or, or do you think they go with the Rook? Yeah, Guess you know, answer. If, if you thought that uh... – I felt bad for Mason Rudolph. I feel even worse for Mitch Trubisky. Not only did he come to a team that just lost a Hall of Fame quarterback in Ben Roethlisberger, now they draft uh, Kenny Pickett, who played at Pitt, which automatically means he's going to be amazing in the league. Um, so uh, uh, all yeah, the pressure. Sure. I feel that. I feel that uh, the pressure is is. And I said last week, I think the pressure might be on Pickett. But yeah, I, I would say that. Um, yeah, I would say that Mitch, the well, pressure's on Mitch. He will start week one, and uh, he probably will be on a short leash. The the, the reason it I asked you guys it's that. It's bullshit. He shouldn't be on well, a short leash I, I, at all. I think he will, though, right? There there yeah. are people. Mark Cavalli thinks Pickett's it's his job. You know, and and, and I, I don't see it either. I think it's Trubisky. I, I think but... that Mark Cabali is trying to appeal to Pitt fans because he knows his bread and butter, and that's smart, but uh, sure. I think he's wrong. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I don't see it happening just yet, but, you know, stranger things, I guess, I as think, they say. I think I'll have a better prediction next week because next week we'll when we record this at least will be may 12th which is when the schedule comes out so depending oh. on when the bye week is may determine how long trubisky gets to start because well, that's a good we, point. we have seen a lot of teams that draft rookie quarterbacks that kind of over that bye week then you have two weeks to transition in your your new quarterback that's true fair point um when was our bye week last week but mid-season it was yeah, like week, week seven or eight. Seven it was, or eight, a, it was a good bye week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ryan, uh, this week uh, uh, the Steelers said they were going to interview a couple other uh, people. Second interviews, I should say, for the general manager job. Oh, here we go. Um, you know, you worked pretty closely with Kevin Colbert, and and while he's on his way out, May thirty first. What uh, do, do you have a, a story or two about him that maybe you haven't shared before? Uh, I don't know if I, I probably shared these before, but like, 
I, I've said this, like we'd be like five, five picks away from selecting in the draft and my phone would ring and he'd be like, Pino, get down here. It's a little too tight in here, you know? <laughs> so I like walk down and I'm like, what's up? And like, he'd be like, give me a Danny Smith. And I'd be like, ah, like, like a master <laughs> in the chat. And I'd be like, I don't have any gum, but I'll do a John Mitchell. Let's go, baby. Okay, baby. All right, baby. Big one damn play. Think you're all damn pro. Um, that was a classic. Uh, Stefan too, had picked off Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, broke his thumb. That was the same yeah. year we ended up beating him in the playoffs. That's right. But to it had a pick and he walked to the sideline and I'll never forget this as long as I live. Mitch, grabbed like the Microsoft Surface tablet and like the defensive line was celebrating and to it was celebrating. And Mitch literally said, make one damn play. Think you're all damn pro. <laughs> and I will never forget that as long as I live. Um, so, yeah. But Kevin, Kevin, um, it just Kevin would call and be like, hey, come down here. And, you know, it's too tight. Do an impression of whoever. Or whatever. Right. Um, and then I would I would just say at camp we would have a we'd have a little campfire a training camp uh, and the you know Kevin would always text me like Peanut where are you at we can't start the fire without you and I always thought that was the ultimate sign of respect. Definitely, um, definitely. I actually text I texted Kevin this morning. Um, Good for you. I uh, I wanted to let the sort of the dust settle a little bit because I'm sure stone was blowing up all weekend. And I just said, Hey man, thanks for everything you've done for the city, for the team. And obviously for me and my career. Um, and he, five minutes later got right back to me and it's like, shit, I only got my, my jobs after my two jobs after the Steelers because of Kevin, I I tell him that all the time, but (laughs) he is so down to earth. You would have no idea who he was if you didn't see him in a war room or, or, you know, and then, you know, that speech last week, you know, got me mm-hmm. all cleared up, mm-hmm. you know. Now, now when, when, uh, when he That's... texted, when he texted you back, did he also mention, uh, maybe ask you why you're hanging out with those three jag offs on this <laughs> weekly podcast? <laughs> I said, Pino, misery loves company. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's like a. <laughs> So that's not even a really good Kevin Colbert impression, right. but he would always be like, do it. Do you do me? Like, do you do an impression of me? And I've said this on the show. That's the worst thing you someone could ever ask. One of the worst things, well, not yeah. the worst, but like someone, <laughs> if people could ask you worse, but they'll always be like, do me. What do I sound like? And then one day I was just like, Pina, you know? <laughs> <laughs> did you have, uh, did, did, did any of the players know that you did a number of uh, impersonations of people around the team? Yeah. So, and I, 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 so yes, players did Ramon okay. Foss. So, uh, Greg Giannotti, who works in New York now with Boomer Size and used to be on the fan morning show here. And I used to do a Ramon Foster impression. And I got Ramon to do an interview one morning, and Greg Giannotti spilled the beans on live radio oh, that no. I did an impression of him. And literally afterwards, like Ramon hung up the phone. He's like, Scarpino, get your ass in here. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, shit. Um, yeah. And then another one, but like, I used to do an Antonio Brown impression. Um, and I'm not going to do that right now. Well, that's a good Ramon Foster. If you although don't know AD Ramon is, Foster, although that AD was... is doing a concert here in Pittsburgh in a couple months, see if I can get some backstage passes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, 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 Mike Tomlin ratted me out. I did it in front of Mike because Kevin yeah. heard it, and then he told Mike Tomlin I did it in front of Coach T. And then coming off the field, a. <laughs> <laughs> Tom was like, yo, AB, Ryan does an impression of you. And AB was like, what? And then I did it. And then, like, the next time Tom was said it, AB, I won't say what AB said, but it, it was like, go Ryan, man, shut the fuck up. I'm like, all right. No so we're going to, uh, real quick, we'll say goodbye to Ben. He's got to jump off here. Um, Ryan, and, you got to uh, go to that AB concert wearing a t shirt that says, trade me and find out. Trade me. <laughs> listen, listen, don't be a dick. It was trade me. Let's find out. Yeah. No punctuation. <laughs> I will never forget those five words as long as I live. That was great. It was. Oh, uh, so I, I got to chime in on Kevin Colbert, though. That I. Uh, so he went to North Catholic, as did I, not at the same time, obviously. Right, but, right. Like, I've run into him a couple times at like alumni things and just like, you know. You meet a guy, you know who he is, but you're just like, hey, you know, how you doing? What's up? You know, 
you kind of talk about North Catholic stuff, but like Ryan's absolutely right. Completely down to earth. Like, you know, just if you didn't know what he did, you would just think he was a normal guy at this thing. Yeah. Right. He wouldn't yeah. think he was the general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, no, I, I think that's one of the great lasting images I'll have of him is just that he was, he was one of us. He's just a regular guy. Uh, got guy to Pittsburgh who is a consummate professional. I mean, you yeah. hear that from everybody. That yeah. And he, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up there tonight, guys, and uh, pick up with a lot more coming up uh, down the road here and, and everything else. But uh, for all three of you knuckleheads and myself, you've been listening to the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And hey, go Steelers. Ravens suck is what I, Ravens Ben suck. Says, but I think he froze. Ben froze. Yeah, he Ben's froze. out. He's like John Wayne. <laughs>